You're listening to the Davy Mac Sports Program on the Riotcast Network, riotcast.com. It's the Davy Mac Sports Program. The Davy Mac Sports Program on Riotcast. All right, and here's your host, Dave McDonald. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Thank you so much. Oh, what an introduction! Unbelievable! Yes, sir. Davy Mac Sports Program on this July Fourth weekend, and we are very excited. My name is Eastside Dave McDonald, aka Davy Mac, aka Roy Schaefer. What? What the do they call me? Sports master. They call me yeah, the sports master. 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 He's the one that we bet after. And tonight we have with us, as always, the engineer extraordinaire. He's one of the greatest in the business. Forget about what I don't know who Bob Bob Bowie is. Who? I don't know who E Rock is. What? I know who Sean O is. Sean O. He's won three Emmys. He's won an Academy Award. He has won two Tonys. He has won one Nobel Peace Prize and one shitty award. I don't know what kind of awards those are, but he's won one. His name is Roy Schaefer. Roy, yeah. Thank you, Roy. And we have a very uh, special audience of one tonight on the couch. Bruce, everybody. Bruce. Bruce! 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 That's a nice little tie-in here. And you know, speaking of Bruce, it is a uh, July 4th weekend. We're very excited. And, uh, you know, it's that time of year where I'm thinking about America, and I'm thinking about, uh, well, the good times to come, and the time where I, you know, had to go and kill eight people in Vietnam. Not necessarily soldiers, they were simply hot dog vendors in Vietnam. <laughs> Things happen, you know, when you're in the, uh, in the shit, as they say, you know? And I just, I just meant I was in the shit, like I was really hungry. And I just kept going to a hot dog stand after hot dog stand and killing people. Well, that happened in Vietnam, Asia. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to celebrate this July 4th together, you and I. Roy Schaefer, Sean O, and Bruce with this uh, very first song, a special song for you, America. Born down in a dead man town, the first kick I took is when I hit the ground. You end up like a dog that's been beat too much till you spent half your life just covering up. July 4th, everybody. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Courtney 
Jamie Cox, come on up the stage. Oh wait, that's a different video, I think. Was that? Yeah, no, that was a that was a totally different video. Never mind. Uh, I get them all confused. I'm so stupid. I hate America. No, I'm just kidding. That's what Americans do. We go it. Down in shadow of a penitentiary. How about a gas fire's refinery? Ten years burning down the road. Nowhere to run, got nowhere to go. Come on, I born in the USA. I was born in the USA. I was born in the USA. I'm a cool rockin' dad. We killed those Russians And we killed those Nazis And we killed those British And we killed the Vietnamese And we killed those Mexicans And we killed those Germans And we killed the Japanese And we killed the Italians And we killed those people And we killed the Iraqis And we killed Afghanistan and we'll kill your mother And we killed Grenada And we killed Canada oh, I'm running out of countries Where are the USA? And we kill everyone And we kill, 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 we're gonna kill you We're gonna kill you We're gonna kill you We're America Everybody, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Shono. Thank you, Roy Schaefer. And thank you to Pepper, who is, well, God damn it, he's not here again. Not even in the USA. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. I don't think Pepper's ever coming back. He missed the Sirius XM show. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not trying to start anything crazy, but um, of course, we do this show on Sirius XM. We get paid for it. <clears throat> well, one of us gets paid for it. <laughs> um, and uh, listen, the guy with the red hair. Roy Schaefer always claims to be a redhead. I don't see it though. I'm a redhead, David. That's one of the weird things well, about I'm this take show. Take my pants off. Is that <laughs> what you're asking? We me? always have this debate. But you, you, your hair—if you took your hat off—it looks dark. It looks not even just dark brown. It looks almost. That does not look red to me, Sean. Sean. Yeah. Is he? Is Roy Schaefer redhead? You've seen Roy Schaefer with long yeah. hair. Yeah. He's got like that red, like a hint of. He's not like a. A straight up yeah. G word. You're not. See, you have the nice kind. It's it's a it's a nice like it's a brown hair, but with you know auburn highlights. Yeah. yeah. I've got Rocky Dennis goddamn hair <laughs> and Rocky Dennis face. Wow. I've never been called a ginger. If that's what you're getting. At. I have. Let me tell you something about it. I never have. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Well. Well. Look at you. Look at me, Mr. Black hair over there, or whatever hair color you have. It's dark brown. <laughs> And uh, we do this show uh, live on Saturdays on the Opie and Anthony channel every uh, Saturday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Pepper didn't show up uh, last week, this past Saturday. He didn't show up the week before. He's taken quite a few weeks and off, he hasn't didn't, he? And then, and then, and then uh, two weeks previous to that, didn't uh, show up to that show. That's right. And it's just me and Roy Schaefer having to rock and roll every goddamn Saturday. I'm just going to call him Roy Pepper from now on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? I'll take that. No, I love Pepper. He's a tremendous person. We had a huge um, text message argument yeah. on Monday, so there's a good chance he'll never be coming back again. Uh, what were you guys, what uh, were you guys uh, fighting no, about? No, good chance. Um, our show wasn't put on on Sirius XM on uh, the on-demand section right, right. until late Monday night. That's right. I heard about it. And this. with Opie and Anthony and Ron Fez in Best Ofs, I was thinking, okay, this will be a perfect time to have our show yeah. you know, in the AM, and the people will be like, you know, not everyone hears it live on Saturday. I understand that. Yep. So if they go on-demand, they get the show. Oh, there's a best of, but we can hear Davey Mac fresh. 
Christ. And uh, the show didn't get put up till seven o'clock at night. And then, oh my God. And I, and I texted him awful things like, well, thanks for fucking me again. <laughs> and I, I'm like, uh, I hope you, because they're from uh, Montreal, I guess that's where he is. So I go, uh, well, I hope you're enjoying the arcade fire, you fucking asshole. <laughs> Enjoy your Expos baseball game because you shit on the Dave man again. I guess this one's going to be rated explicit at the end of the day, Sean. Yeah. We don't want to make uh, Sean work on this July 4th weekend. I market shit. Yeah, let's not, let's not mark shit anymore. All right. Yeah, I mean, well, I like well, let's try to mark shit sometimes. I haven't fucking marked anything <laughs> in like three weeks shows. <laughs> I, we didn't realize as long as you ex- as you put explicit on it, yeah. it you know, you're telling people the truth. Say whatever you, the fuck you have you to want. put that in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I don't think we made. I think we made the what's hot list on iTunes yep. because we were not. Explicit hmm. That's probably because people, very true. yeah, because we 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 appeal to a broad generation of people. Yeah. So we should probably we. But for these next, you know, couple, I feel like in the summertime, maybe we can keep yeah. it explicit, Everybody's and then we'll drinking. go back to yeah, exactly. Could, I know you are, yeah. you son of a bitch. <laughs> what are your plans for July Fourth weekend, Shano? All right, I got some serious, awesome plans tomorrow. I'm gonna uh, mow the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Roy gave him a charge for that. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll probably uh, see if there's a baseball game on at some point. Probably you know after. there will be. What, that's, that's one of the best things about July 4th. Yeah. I love to sit there and watch baseball for 12 hours. You can see why, um, I don't know, my wife might hate me. Uh, everyone else <laughs> is at the beach and me, you know, going... You know, fireworks and stuff like that. I'm like, I got 12 hours of baseball, dogs. No, eh? Long Island, it's impossible to go anywhere. You have to go there the night before. Dude, I live at the Jersey Shore. It's, it's almost as impossible. Yeah. It was, it, well, I was telling you guys before the show. Yeah. Um, I have a bus that leaves uh, from a place in, in New Jersey, leaves at 2.45. I usually get the skinny man at 4.15 almost, almost every single time. And today, two, my 2.45 bus got there at 5.30. Thirty. Oh. It was just uh, that's two yeah. hours and forty five minutes. Oh my god! I mean, there On was this. I, I felt like ripping the bus driver's dick off, and my dick. And there was I was sitting next to a little six year old, and I was gonna rip his dick off too. <laughs> Explosive. Ouch. I'm sorry, Bruce. I'm sorry you had to hear that. You're here. <laughs> you're thinking it's gonna be a nice show, and next thing you know, people are talking about ripping children's dicks off. I ain't Sandusky, if that's what you were thinking. I would rip it off. I wouldn't suck it, Daddy. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is our one-shot television people don't understand. We have an executive in here. He says, uh, you know, hey, listen, I'm going I'm to make you guys into movie stars. I'm going to put Davey Mac Sports Program, the movie, out oh, All right. for, in, in Hollywood. That's what Bruce told me before the show. That's right. And I say, well, great, because Pepper ain't here, and I'm talking about ripping children's dicks off. And sucking them. Now that, yeah, no, I'll say it, Bruce. I'll suck them. If I'm going to go to the goddamn... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they got bathrooms on those buses. <laughs> you know what's weird? They have bathrooms almost like clockwork on these academy buses going up to New York City, uh-huh. but never coming home. And coming home is when inevitably I leave Sean O and Roy Schaefer's uh, fantastic studio, Skinny Man Studios in Times Square, and I have to piss like a racehorse. Yeah. And there's never. Uh, 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 bathrooms on the return bus. So yes, I intentionally buy a huge thing of apple juice that I dump out. <laughs> I swear to God, this is the absolute truth. I in will, t- I in, believe you, David. in Port Authority, I dump it down the toilet. I'm not surprised. And then I will be on a chair. I will always take a chair, you know, on the window. Right. And even if there's someone sitting next <laughs> to me, I will just like wow, go over like this and piss. I have to. Now what I'm am I supposed to do? Piss my pants? I mean, seriously, am I supposed to piss my pants? Fair enough. I've been doing that gimmick since the Ron Fez days. Like, I've been, you know, just constantly pissing. And, yeah, the, the, I am so lucky to have not been arrested by <laughs> now. Say. Between that and watching my iPhone porn, watching <laughs> you jizz, and me, like, you know, hitting the guy. Don't you like interracial gangbangs? <laughs> what do you think? Anyway. What are you doing for I love... Uh, so what are you doing for the holidays, David? No, 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 no. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to Anthony's house. <laughs> you are, right? Yeah. You're not even joking. That's no, the great thing. Auntie Kumia from yeah. the Open Anthony show. Yeah, I'm going to Anthony's house. You invite yourself to Anthony's house. Yeah, my whole family. I'm taking the whole crew. No, 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 no. Be honest. Be I'm, honest. No, I'm, I, am, I'm, kids. I am going to Anthony's house, and I am bringing my kids. You are going to Anthony <laughs> Kumia's house yeah. this Saturday. Yeah, I got an invite. And you're bringing your children. I'm bringing my You yeah. got an invite in the, because the you contacted him. 
No pizza hate. You got it. Actually, you? no. It was uh, it was th- through someone else. So I got I got the. Who was it? Someone else. I'm, I am not at liberty to say. Oh, I know who it was. Me too. I know who it was. Yeah. Titties. <laughs> was it? Just say that. Yeah. Mm. So, you better be very careful at that goddamn party. I just see this whole Roy <laughs> Schaefer mansion and everything just crumbling down. <laughs> Ooh. Roy, what did you do at Anthony's house? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, wife. We'll keep her name out of it. Yes, thank you. Oh, my God. That's, I know. I, I feel uh, that's one of the funniest things of all time. When Roy told me he actually invited me to <laughs> <Yeah>. Anthony's <laughs> Anthony Cumia's party. He goes, uh, Dave, um, I just wanted to extend a personal invitation to you to Anthony's house. <laughs> I'm like, I've known this man since 2005. So uh, for nine years, I've known him. I, trust me, I know I can go over to his house. Sure. He's invited me any, time, any Saturday in this summer that I want to go over to his house. He has said, you can come over. Of course, yeah. And he'll drop whatever he's doing and stuff he like that. He loves you, man. He loves you. <laughs> oh, he loves thanks. <laughs> thanks, uh, Club Soda Roy over here. <laughs> Liaison to Anthony. <laughs> Club Soda Shafee. I'll tell him you said hello. <laughs> Roy the cop talking to us over here. <laughs> what are you running an anti security for Christ's sakes? Huh? Is that your new thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I know Anthony. I'm going to do a little karaoke. Roy does this to people. <laughs> Maybe he, 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 he meets someone. One, actually, the, the, that was the single most fun party I've ever been the to. Halloween the, party. the Anthony's Halloween party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where. Sean O and I got baked outside yeah. in October. It was actually kind of a cool yeah, it was a um, Halloween party. Little bit, but I mean, brisk, mm-hmm. you know, weather. So no one was outdoors. So right. Sean and O just went right by the swimming peel, uh, pool, smoked up some pot, and w- we went down because everyone was inside right. doing the whole uh, karaoke thing. And he has the best karaoke stage in the business. He does. He okay, does. it was invented yeah. for his house. And I got up and started to do uh, a song. I think I did was doing Cheers. But I looked over at Sean O, and he had the pot giggles. <laughs> and then, literally, there was at least, what, 50 people downstairs watching like, it, like including, family, family all, members, including yeah. old school, like, Italian yeah, people yeah, yeah. Yeah. who just, first of all, they see a, a goddamn red haired guy <laughs> With a singing and being yeah. loud. And they're like, Does anyone have a handgun? Kill the, kill the Irish. Kill the Irish. They just had, like, flashbacks of, like, Ellis Island and the Irish cop, like, Slamming his bat into an Italian's <laughs> nose. And uh, I look at Sean O. He's giggling. And so I start giggling. So instead of people hearing the, che- the Cheers theme song, they were just hearing like, uh, making the way in the world today. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me off guard, Dave. <laughs> no, I'm saying this is what I sound like. The world today takes everything you got. <laughs> Why does Sean O look like that? <laughs> Does anyone else see Sean O? I forgot that only me and Sean O were high as kites. Everyone else there, yes, they were sipping wine, they were doing their thing, yeah. but they were not, you know, they were not in this yeah. altered state of Pink Floydism no. that Sean O and I. It was just totally inappropriate for me to be, even be on the stage. No, you you did good. I I, I didn't. It. I remember. I liked it. Roy did great. He was I, like a highlight of the evening. No, I know. Piano. Honestly, it was like. Uh, Fucking uh, Temple of the Dog when Roy was playing keyboards, yeah, Brother, Brother Joe, Joe was playing guitar, and yeah. Anthony's on stage, and then Dawn was singing background vocals. That's I'm great. like, okay, super group. <laughs> Goddamn super group right here. I was so pissed I didn't bring my drum set. <laughs> you should have. <laughs> probably better off. Or just actually. your snare drum. Oh, yeah, the way you were. Because I'm saying, I was yeah, in the yeah. same place. He, yeah. sh- he probably would have shot you. Yeah, probably. At least Trust me, I, it was the first time I talked to Big A for like an hour and a half. Oh, I'm God. like, uh, how does it feel to be big? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just sitting there talking to him like we were eating little, you know, Reese's Pieces Buttercups because it was Halloween. There was candy all over the place. I'm like, this is the best. You know, Big A, we never have these type of conversations, bro. <laughs> but you're awesome. Big. <laughs> big A, Big A, Big A, Big A. Big A, Big A. Um, on my way up here, I was actually listening to Chris Mad Dog Russo on Sirius XM. Oh, all right. And he had something where he uh, said that uh, Shawshank Redemption, I kind of like the, uh, the premise. He was saying Shawshank Redemption is one of the absolute best movies of all time. Whoa. I ain't going to uh, debate him on that. In yeah, fact, I was I quite agree. proud yeah. of him. But then he said, uh, 
There was absolutely nothing else going on in 1994. Okay. Wow. The, the <laughs> movies of 1994, also that were nominated. Uh, Forrest Gump. Now, listen, hey, I think Shawshank is way better than Forrest Gump, but it was out. He it's can't out. say there was nothing out. It was a big hit. Quiz Show, a phenomenally underrated and awesome movie. Great movie. Ed Wood, and yeah, a little thing called Pulp Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> and when the movie genius, Chris Russo... When, when asked, when someone called up and asked, he says, I haven't seen Pulp Fiction. Uh, <laughs> Come on. I swear to God. I actually have the same I, thing. I, I haven't seen Pulp Fiction. Um, um, you know, I, I, everyone loves Tarantino. I haven't seen Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs. I haven't seen Jackie Brown. I have still yet to see uh, Inglorious <laughs> Bastards, and I certainly have not seen Django uh, Unchained. I don't proud know. Sounds proud of it. Sounds yeah, proud of his accomplishment. He's, he's like proud to yeah. like not have seen Tarantino. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Why would you be proud to be ignorant you know, you're, you're claiming to be a movie fan. I mean, even if you do it, hey, it's goddamn America. It's July 4th weekend. You're entitled to not like Tarantino, right. but you got to go out. You have to see a Pulp Fiction if you're a movie fan. Yeah. Sean, I was uh, just watching it today, actually. Yeah, what yeah, happened? Our intern uh, is young Alex. So she uh, is it's 19. It's a chick, right? Yeah, she's 19. And we started talking about movies somehow. Next thing you know, uh, never saw Pulp Fiction. Never saw Reservoir Dogs. I don't, I, I don't, I mean, again, I don't want to be some sort of weird film elitist. Well, yeah, but I, did I she give the uh, thing of, well, that was before my time? No, she never said that. But, okay, because that she, kills me. But she implied with every movie I was listening that she'd never seen. She never saw True Romance. She never saw these movies that were big in the 90s. I get it. She's 19. I, I, I understand like a 19-year-old you know, not having seen a bunch of stuff, but never in my life, even when I was 18 and 19, did I ever say the word, well, that was before my time. Because guess what? Godfather yeah, was course. before my time. Yeah. Star Wars Jaws. was before Star Wars and Jaws yeah. were before my time. Okay, Patton. I mean, let's go on and on. Annie what? Hall is before my time, technically. All right, right, right. It, it's a, and even on a larger scope, the Bible or uh, the Beatles or Shakespeare <laughs> yeah. were before. Our, it's not like you sit there and just well, I was, I was, listen. The world starts when I was born. I was before my time. Have you ever heard of Frank Sinatra? Before my time, dog. Before well, she, my time. She was very receptive. You know, she was just like, no, I just never saw it. And I was like, all right, well, we're going to change that today. Uh, you sat down, watched sat the entire down, movie? watched the entire movie. With and her. what'd you think? And she totally loved it. Of course. She totally loved it. it. It's one of those films that, I mean, we, we, I mean, listen, I love it. I think most people who are listening to this show, at least, love it. But even if you don't love it, you have to see Pulp Fiction now, for crying a lot. Bruce? <laughs> Thank you, you Bruce. Now, you know, Marcellus obviously uh, has a little... Marcellus Wallace. Has a little butt pain in that movie. And, yeah. and you know, that he gets was, raped. I remember that, yeah. I remember that, that scene... No, no, we decided it's going to be explicit. Oh, I don't know why, yeah. That's right. It's fucking the ass <laughs> by Zed. And, you know, I remember that being kind of a big deal. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't see that coming, and that blew my mind. She it was, did. She even mentioned after the movie, she's like, I think that you were expecting a different reaction, because I was, like, watching her face, like, when he opened no, the door. No, but in a way... But she's like... Uh, she was well, listen, I mean, so many directors, you know, they, they open one door and then it's up to a different generation to open up the next door. I mean, I think Scorsese with like the, the crazy adult language and Mean Streets and Taxi Driver obviously opened up the door for Tarantino with Reservoir Dogs and Pulp right. Fiction. I think we all we you know, we can all understand that. But um, yeah, we were not expecting the huge black gangster right. to be raped. Right. And that, I mean, that was insane. I remember seeing it and it was like, I got like, someone actually was shaking me. Yeah. Like I was, and I'll tell you one thing about my daddy, Patty Mac, Patty yeah. McDonald. Yeah. He was so cool that, well, no, because my mom has been a huge um, film watcher her entire life. And okay. I've told you guys. Yeah, sure. We actually went, she actually brought me to the Untouchables when I was 10. It was 1987. That's the, uh, I was that's born the, in 77. The yeah, cartoon? That. The Family of Superheroes? The no. Untouchables. Fucking De Niro and Kevin Costner. I, I, watched, it. I watched that with my parents. So yeah. anyway, um, she, she brought me to the theater to see that, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, even the ticket ripper, I remember being like, this is the Untouchables. Uh, this is not a, yeah. Uh, are you sure? She's like, I know what movie it is. <laughs> my mom all, you know, boozed up mm -hmm. as always. Anyway, um. She brought me into it. I loved it. She, you know why? She trusted me. She trusted that I would not be scared or freaked out. Oh, that's very noble. And so, you know, when, when it comes to uh, Pulp Fiction, she told my dad, listen, this is an important movie. He's got to go see it. So my dad actually dropped us off at the movie theater because I was only 16. <laughs> and they wouldn't let us get, of course get tickets. Yeah. And my dad sat in this thing and came in, came up to the ticket window and bought us tickets. Bought me and my friend. Now, I... 
I'm sure he, you know, uh, he said to my friend John and my friend Pat Clark, do yeah. not tell yeah. your parents. Shut your goddamn mouth. <laughs> yeah. 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 You were supposed to be over at our house playing fucking wiffle ball. Yeah. Bingo. You're something. about to see ass rape. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, in, in summation, she was cool with Pulp Fiction? She loved it. She absolutely loved it and just decided. And, and then after that, I went and showed her the, uh, the intro, the first scene of Inglorious Bastards, just to... Uh, that first scene is more. amongst the best thing Tarantino's ever done, as I agree, far as I'm concerned. Which is why I, I wanted to show her. Oh my God, so, is it good? So tense, so so creepy, so That's amazing. That's the monologue with the. Uh, That's uh, Christoph Waltz comes in. To, yeah, the uh, whole thing where he's you know, so, with the milk. Yeah, farm. just Monsieur let the viewers petite. know. <laughs> good point. Yeah. Um, which brings me to uh, someone who I think should be in a Quentin Tarantino uh, uh, movie. His name is Neil Diamond. Oh. And uh, if that isn't the worst segue for a song, well, gosh darn it. I don't know what is. We'll work on a but worse it, one <laughs> for the next song. But it is July 4th weekend. And so we feel like you guys need to hear these songs because God knows you'll be hearing them over and over and over again when you watch your goddamn rinky-dink fireworks in your little town and what we're all pretend that we were there fighting the Brits years ago. 1791. Right, Roy? I thought it was the Germans. Whatever. Everywhere around the world We're coming to America Every time the flags unfurl We're coming to America Got a dream to take them there America Got a dream they want to share We're coming to America 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 Today Today America, America rock. Franklin Guinness, America. New York Yankees, America. Steven Spielberg, America. America rock. Hey, ho, let's go bomb the Japanese. Hey, ho, let's go. All the Nazis gotta go. Everybody see. White stripes now, and the 50 stars now. America rock. One more, right? Hey. George Watch America. Thomas Jefferson, America. Abraham Lincoln, America. America rock. Here you go. Drums, Roy Schaefer on the keyboard. Give yourselves a round of applause so Woo! I'm not the we only one it. clapping. We did it, you guys. Because that just sounds weird. That does. That was great, guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Roy Schaefer. <laughs> Thanks, man. I gave you credit. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're celebrating the uh, old uh, July 4th there. We're very happy. Um, uh, what do uh, you know? Your wife is a uh, European. Yeah. Um, well, no, I have a. There's a point to all this, Sean. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, um, no but I, I'm I'm always curious about you know what a European thinks of uh, 
the celebration of, of July Fourth. Do they just think? Country? Well, well, I mean, no, she's not. You know, she's not English. No, she's no. Uh, she's Irish. But yeah. uh, I mean, you know, do other countries just look at us as like what? What just pieces of garbage? America needs to celebrate all the time, and now they're celebrating themselves. Because I would think, you know, there's a lot of places in the world You're that right, are yeah. anti-American. Of course. And so now, now more than ever. this whole holiday, yeah, now more than ever. And this whole holiday is flags and fireworks yeah. and we're America! Yeah. We're going to kill you! <laughs> right. That's right. So I'm just curious. Does, does she have any uh, insight? Give me your thoughts on she, that. She locks herself in a room while the fireworks are going off. And, <laughs> so, She's with the dogs so they don't yeah, run away. Yeah, and I just oh, take come that. Come on. Is that, I mean, honestly. No, it's, a, it's a, just a regular barbecue holiday like anything else. You she's know? glad to have a day off. Yeah, that's it. I don't think, uh, I don't think anyone really takes it that way, Dave. You know, even Europeans. I think... Um, one of the weird things about July Fourth is that uh, everything, a, a, a lot of holidays now are right. taking over the July Fourth gimmick. Like uh, we're supposed to have the barbecue and beers on yeah. me- Memorial Day. Right, right. You started off before there. you which, know, which is about dead yeah. soldiers. Yeah, before you know, we're going to be having to send out Hallmark cards before <laughs> July. No, but what I'm saying is that you know, okay, you're, oh, you're supposed to barbecue on M- Memorial Day, and right. I, you know, pretty soon you're going to be barbecuing on Easter, and yeah, yeah Jesus yeah. is dead. Let's make some burger, yeah. dog. Get the beers. <laughs> Jesus died today, dude. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> you know, fireworks and stuff in the shape of a cross. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hail to the Jesus. He got killed by Jews. <laughs> Bruce, I didn't ask you your religion. Um, <laughs> Okay, thank you. Bruce is a confirmed atheist, <laughs> and he wishes all of us to die. <laughs> is that fair, Bruce? No. <laughs> I'm sorry for putting you on the spot. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I just think, you know, enjoy barbecues and beers and all that, that's a July 4th thing because it's a celebration. You're right. Memorial Day has co-opted the, the entire July 4th thing. So yeah. now I feel like, uh, well, I just served... Uh, Hot dogs and burgers and beers on Memorial Day. Now it's like you have to get all fancy and like yeah. I, I have to have some sort of weird Austrian sausage. Yeah, hanger because steak. if you have burgers again, it's like oh, this is kind of this is lame. Yeah. Davy Max house. I mean, he gave us burgers last time. <laughs> Potato salad. What is last this? Time. Let's get some macaroni salad. By the way, I'm joking. I don't entertain people at my I house. Know you don't, yeah. Dave. I'm sorry, Roy. I ain't no Anthony Kumi <laughs> over here. You won't even tell me where you live. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, something, something, Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue. Want you, uh, make want sure you, you bring a rifle <laughs> and stand right outside the fence. All right? You'll come get me and let me in? <laughs> One, two, three, fake street. <laughs> oh, golly. Well, I guess uh, we haven't touched on this goddamn Aaron Hernandez thing. Oh, yeah. So let me just uh, quickly touch on that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. There's Roy's uh, racist keyboard. Um, so Aaron Hernandez... He's got the uh, obviously, you know, uh, you know, attempted murder charge against him. Yep. He's also being investigated for a double homicide in 2012. Now they're thinking that maybe this guy, you know, the the original thing that we heard was this Odin Lloyd guy, who was the guy who was murdered, was talking to the wrong people. Okay, talking. Whoa, the natural thunder and lightning are uh, <laughs> occurring over here. Yeah. I, I always know there's some weather pattern because Sean looks like the RCA dog for a second. <laughs> He's like, what is that? Yeah, I don't want um, to be struck by lightning. <laughs> but uh, Odin Lloyd gets killed, more right? more thunder, Dave. There, that's it, yeah. Was that played on Roy's uh, rolling no. keyboard? No, okay. that was outside, Dave. So anyway, um, and by the way, uh, uh, on Roy's uh, rolling keyboard, sometimes he plays it and it sounds like, hey, everybody, I book for O&A. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway, so the whole point is this. Uh, they're thinking perhaps this Odin Lloyd guy knew about the this double homicide Aaron Hernandez was either uh, you know he was directly responsible or some of his boys were responsible right and this and that and maybe that's why he was killed rather than the 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 thing that we heard originally which was he was talking to the wrong people quote unquote okay which does seem like you know, a little shady it, it, I'm, well, but I mean it seems like not it, a reason to kill someone yeah it seems like too much of a reason even for this Aaron Hernandez obviously nut case now moron the Boston police, Massachusetts police, are going back to uh, 2007 Uh-oh. to Gainesville, Florida, where Aaron Hernandez was a freshman at Florida University. Okay. 
and thinking he may have had a role in a 2007 shooting that left two men wounded. Um, a source with knowledge of the murder investigation told uh, ABC News one of the men was shot in the back of the head. Ooh. So this guy is just a, an uh, absolute, you he's, know, he's he is a wild dog yeah, who somehow caught touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's not even anymore that he's a football player who happened to kill right. people. It's yeah. a killer who, who happened, happened to, to yeah, yeah, catch player. goddamn yeah. touchdowns from right. Tom Brady. Right. And of all people, Tim Tebow. That was his quarterback. <laughs> Speaking of that, now, of course, with ESPN... They have to give you everything, you know, it's the dark and the good, and, and they have to put in a, a, a Tim Tebow story. So even though it's, it's, they have a wonderful story, I'm not saying it's wonderful that a guy died and people are being killed and this and that, right. but they have a big time story, right? Okay. You don't need to bring up Tebow, but of course ESPN has to put in, um, in 2008, Tim Tebow broke up a fight with Aaron Hernandez Whoa. where he was going to beat up somebody. Uh, at a uh, 2007, a bar fight, Aaron Hernandez was um, getting uh, mad at one of the employees at the bar, and Tebow had to break it up and then pay the tab. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, was, maybe Tebow is Jesus. You know, was, maybe we're be. being just like way too yeah. skeptical. Yeah, he might. You know, might I mean, well this is Jesus a guy. Christ. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Aaron, if Aaron Hernandez is close to being the devil. I know it's America, yeah. innocent until proven guilty. Come on. Let's all use our heads for a second. This guy, you know, he, uh, I, I'm not. If OJ got off, this guy can get off. I want to start Good. rolling with Tebow. He's going to break up any fights I get in and then and pay my pay bill. The bill. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> this I know. Is great. Tim Tebow, come to Davy Mackland, baby. Yeah. I'm sure me and Shano are going to be skipping out on a bill at the Hard Rock Cafe <laughs> in about two hours. Yeah, <laughs> punching a bouncer in the face on the way out. Just tonight because. ain't just a skinny man beers night. <laughs> Tonight's the oh, night yeah? when Shano and I painted town red a little bit. We're turning it up. Uh -oh. Yeah, but we get we have to have Tebow to pay the bill because huh. I ain't paying a goddamn nickel. Yeah, me either. Actually, I know someone who can get us into Guy Fieri's and we can drink on the house. I'm not gonna say who, but I do know someone. Guy, okay. does it involve boobies? <laughs> no, it uh, doesn't. Oh, okay. Unless Josh Eldridge, my manager, has tits. <laughs> 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 boobies. <laughs> You're sick, Roy. You know that? You're goddamn sick. You told me this was uncensored, Roy. Yes, David. Who is your favorite American of all time? I'm going to say Freeman McNeil. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Freeman. Oh, my God. I was watching the NFL Network. And for people who are wondering why Sean O and I are laughing about that, Roy knows absolutely nothing about sports. Yeah, right. Jack that's, that's and a, shit. That's for an American. He's as they say... Wait, Freeman's only, not an American? <laughs> well, no, I'm saying. He's the only as, sports guy you know. As yeah. they say, Jack and shit. Yeah. And Jack left town. Okay, that's what he knows about sports. That's right. So he one time, what's the story really quickly, met Freeman McNeil? I had never met him, actually. I just... Uh, so what, what, what's the connection again to Freeman McNeil Everyone in school the had a favorite athlete. I didn't know anyone at the time, so I was like, So All you right. chose Freeman... So I found a guy who played for the, the Jets. The Jets, he's a running back. And I was like, I'm going to memorize everything about this guy. Freeman so McNeil. Next time it comes up in conversation in school, I'll have some See, factoids. See, now, this is funny. I didn't even know that. I thought you had met Freeman McNeil. Never met him. So you just remember... Of all the players in the yeah. NFL, like, at that time, that it was the 80s. The, yeah. the saddest story. That's ever. horrible. He was uh, he had a nice lucky number twenty four. <laughs> Dude, like, hey, hold on, time out. Yeah, and you're right. And you know why? The NFL Network, you know, they they do top ten shows as every goddamn channel does. Sure. Um, and uh, one of the uh, things was top ten running backs of the 1980s. Oh. And I swear to God, he didn't make the top ten list, but they have the thing when they come back from commercial, best of the rest. Yeah. And in best of the rest, it was Freeman McNeil. I burst out laughing. <laughs> now I can never watch poor Freeman McNeil without thinking of Roy Schaefer. <laughs> poor little Roy Schaefer. Because he knows so much little about sports <laughs> that he's brought up Freeman McNeil, 57. He's like fucking Joe DiMaggio <laughs> of sports references with one guy. <laughs> Freeman fucking McNeil. You found a Freeman McNeil football card and just memorized the back you have stats. no idea, Sean, yeah. how happy I was when Free McNeil came on TV. I was like, Free McNeil! <laughs> See? <laughs> Freeman McNeil doesn't even talk as much about Freeman McNeil <laughs> in 2013 as we do. What a, what a great first name, though. Hey, well, that was one of the, another thing that attracted me to him was Freeman. his name. Freeman. He was clearly, you know, as a Good history there. What you know? are you saying? An African American? <laughs> are you going to try and uh, bring this? We have Bruce here <laughs> who's trying to give us a tryout for HBO. <laughs> the, the goddamn Davy Mac sports so program on there's HBO. A, there's probably a good Quentin Tarantino story behind there somewhere. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Well, it was nice knowing you, Bruce. Thanks for not giving us a goddamn contract. <laughs> Thanks, Roy. You, got, you, you blew it. Bruce was here. He's still um, here. 
Sorry. Yeah, he's still, <laughs> still there. So, uh, Freeman Mc... Yeah. So, I mean, that was fantastic. And uh, I was just... Wait, so who... So you asked so me... So ecstatic. Who is my favorite American? Who is your favorite Canadian who used to be a Canadian, but now has dual citizenship oh. in Canada and America? <laughs> That's a much better question. Okay, there we go. Uh... Maybe Dave Foley from Kiss Wrong. in the Hall? No? I'll tell you who. There's colors on the street! <laughs> There's colors on the street! There's colors on the street! Red, white, and blue. People sleeping in their shoes. People sleeping in their shoes. There's a war inside on the road ahead. Oh, there's a lot of people say we'd be better off. Next verse, I see you. I don't know the words, but, but I like baby, the way the Neil Young sings his songs. I don't know many words of anything, but I sure know one thing that man can sing. I say, keep on rocking in the free world. Keep on rocking in the free world. Keep on rocking. Baby. Keep on rocking in the free world. Alright. Keep it down for a little bit now, right here. We got a thousand points of light for the homeless man. We got a kinder, gentler machine gun hand. We got the pop and stores and toilet paper. Got to turn on the goddamn fuse. Boom. You don't need to put on VH1. Bam. And I would say you don't need to put on MTV, but it's like teenagers who smoke crack and are knocked up. So <laughs> let's just eliminate them. <laughs> you turn on the Davey Mac Sports Program. Am I right? You are right, David. Am I right? You are right, David. Am I right? You are right, David. Am I right? I said, Roy, am I right? I said, am I right? You are right, David. 
You loved your life for the weekend. Stars and stripes, Roy Schaefer. Baby Dave, I do. What kind of side dishes do you have at your barbecue? Just a little macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> What a crazy ass show for Bruce to this be one, in this here. Is, this is like oh, this is one for the books, baby. Oh my god, breaking all the records. <laughs> I don't know if uh, anybody. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I was oh. gonna I was gonna talk about this uh, Dodger Yasiel uh, Puig. That's his name. Huh? Hold on. And uh, I know, I know. Sean, you're supposed to be a goddamn baseball fan. Say it again. Yasiel Puig. Puig. Plays for the Los Angeles Dodgers. It's uh, Swedish. Was called, <laughs> very much Cuban. Oh. He uh, got called <laughs> up. First 100 at bats. He had only 44 hits Whoa. and seven home runs. Yes, Sean, I'll do the math for you. Yeah, That's a 440. 40 average, yeah. 440. This guy That's is the good, new right? deal. This is ridiculous. And uh, well, he's Cuban. He's utterly amazing. And then Jonathan Papelbon mm. for the Philadelphia Phillies, yeah. used to be, uh, of course, the closer for the Red Sox, Garbage. who uh, would come out to uh, shipping up to Boston by the drop, Dropkick Murphys. Oh, yeah. He used okay. to come out to Edward <laughs> Sandman. No, that's, that's <laughs> Mariano Rivera. I know, but Papelbon came out to the same song. No, he didn't. I swear to God, he did. He tried. And he, his, his, song was, his song was shipping up to Boston. Mm. Trust me. No. Red Sox fans, no. trust me. No. Shono, Mm-mm. people are going to be listening and they're going to yeah. be banging their That's radios. Right. Trust email, me. email Dave <laughs> and tell him that he's wrong. Boston fans know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Shipping up to Boston. But the funny thing was he went to the Phillies and tried to br- uh, bring no. shipping up to Boston. A song with Boston in the title. <laughs> oh, my God. He tried. So this, you know, he's, he's one of these John Rocker... Um, not very smart type yeah. baseball players. Yeah. Meatheads yeah. is what we call them. So everyone's like, hey, listen, do you think uh, this Yasiel Puig, he, he, I mean, honestly, he's a huge story in baseball right now. Uh, obviously, he's not a huge story to Freeman McNeil Schaefer or Sean Bowling O over here. But to the Dave man, to the yeah. sports audience at home, he's a big deal. And they asked uh, this uh, guy, uh, this uh, Papal Bond, should he be on the All-Star team? And he goes, absolutely not. <laughs> He's only been in baseball for a month. So? In his one month, he has seven home runs, 44 hits, and 100 RBIs. And the thing that baseball misses time and time again is a good PR moment. Yeah. Everyone is talking right. about Puig. Yes, he should be in the All-Star game. It's a bullshit game when, anyway. when, when it's a buzz, when someone gets buzz, and baseball drops the ball in this time and time. Last year, when Bryce Harper was a rookie... He was having uh, nice stats, but again, they pulled him up, you know, kind of, you know, in May or something like that. Okay. And they were saying, you know, should he make the All-Star? Uh, no, he's only been in baseball for a month. Or two. But everyone was talking about Bryce Harper. Yeah. Put him in the goddamn game. If they, if they, if David Wright doesn't start at third, and if the, if if Matt Harvey for the Mets isn't the starting pitcher at City Field where the Mets play, then that's yet again baseball dropping the ball. The, the only thing that the NFL does right is hype their players. Right. And they, they make Get sure Peyton Manning is out there doing goddamn Oreo commercials and all Ford commercials and all kinds of shit. Yeah. And, and, and baseball consistently drops that ball. They don't get into the 21st century. It just pisses me off. Roy Schaefer, what's your opinion on that? I am pissed off about that, too. That reminds me, speaking of commercials. I cannot wait for what's coming up next. Should we be doing a commercial here? Sure. Tweakedaudio.com, Daddy. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing right now, Bruce. I don't know what kind of earbuds you have, but I have tweakedaudio.com earbuds. Tweakedaudio.com. These are the best earbuds in the world. Uh, Come on. You you, you buy an iPhone or something like that, they might come with earbuds. You can't listen to those. Tweakedaudio.com specializes in spectacular sound earbuds. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. My two favorite kinds are green and wood. I don't know what your kinds are. I like green and wood. Tweakedaudio.com. Yeah, Sean. 33% off. 33% off on the promo code Davey, D-A-V-E-Y. Tweakedaudio.com. Anything else? (laughs) No, anything else? That's it. That's it. It would have been good if you kept bringing up bullet points. Oh. (laughs) I'm learning, Dave. (laughs) I don't care. I don't care.
I don't Ten care. Years. Shano, listen to me. Yes, sir. I want to thank you. Oh. You know, because yeah. I've had just enough Budweiser where I'm feeling happy. <laughs> okay. It's one of these. At I've got ten, these 10 phone... o'clock tonight, I'm going to give uh, text saying, messages to these... Shano and Pepper like, you fucked up the audio. <laughs> I've gotten these phone calls before. <laughs> I want to thank you. You're you know, and when I think of America, I think of Shano. Yeah. I don't think of Mr. Nazi over here, Roy Schaefer, <laughs> with the goddamn Irish He's bride. He's just How a does that sympathizer. Happen? He's not an actual Nazi. I know. But I, I'm... I, Roy Schaefer is the only person who cried at Schindler's List because he said, the bad guys lost. <laughs> Did not, David. He was so happy that Tom Hanks would have his brain blown out at the end of that. Well, well it is America, and we're going to leave you now with this one final song. And when I think of America, I think of this. Some things in life are sad They can really make you mad Other things make you swear and curse When you're chewing on life's gristle Don't grumble, give a whistle This'll help things turn out for the best And always look on the bright side of life Always look on the light side of life For life is quite absurd and death's the final word You must always face the curtain with a bow Forget about your sin, give the audience a grin Enjoy it, it's your last chance anyhow And always look on the bright side of death Just before your last terminal breath Life's a piece of shit when you look at it Life's a laugh and death's a joke, it's true You'll see it's all a show, keep them laughing as you go Just remember that the last laugh is on you And always look on the bright side of life Always look on the light side of life. Come on, Roy, keep changing now. Always look on the light side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. Well, I want to thank everyone for coming in here. And watching us on this July 3rd or July 4th or July 5th, whenever you're downloading this show. And I want to thank you for listening to Davey Mac Sports Program week in and week out. I want to thank you for visiting Riotcast.com and subscribing to us on iTunes and listening to me on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. I want to thank my big black dildo in my car that I keep for, you know, reasons that you guys don't need to know about. I want to think about, uh, I want to thank the nice Asian dildo that I keep in my trunk. Again, reasons people don't need to think about. I want to thank a certain puppet. His name does not need to be spoken on this show because of the things he says. But I do want to thank him. I guess I want to thank Pepper, who hasn't showed up in nine months. I want to thank, right here, people at the Skinny Man Studios. Shono, Roy Schaefer, but most importantly, Bruce. Time in, time out. Bruce kills it. Today, I mean, it, listen, look for Bruce. I want to thank myself for coming up here from New Jersey into Times Square, having to deal with two hours and 45 fucking minutes of traffic. And God damn it, when I go through Times Square, I have to go through one, not two, but four fucking Spider-Mans who are bothering me to take a picture with them for a dollar. There's at least nine Marios. There's ten Luigis. Now you have three different goddamn motherfucking naked cowboys. How the hell that happened? It's a franchise. I was, why did naked cowboys become a fucking franchise? And I've got a fucking... And now we have Captain Jacks 
from fucking Pirates of the Caribbean. There's like 10 Captain Jacks over here. And there's like nine fucking Don't Standers. And I'm simply trying to go to here and we say happy fucking July 4th weekend and happy fucking the thing of America. And I got all kinds of fucking weird mascots and Ewoks trying to grab my fucking dick. Does that have to happen? Every fucking time I'm in Times Square, and it's just like a giant human fucking ant farm. And I'm just, I, it, the fucking thing from Port Authority and Times Square should take 30 seconds instead of taking two fucking hours. I'm sick of it. Hey, Dave. Always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. Happy July 4th weekend to you and yours. Be safe, unlike me and Sean O, who have propane tanks in our kitchens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Roy Schaefer. You're very welcome, David. And, uh, well, I'll say thank you to Pepper, even though I don't know where he's been. Force of habit. It's like a Where's Waldo. He's not in America. He's, he's the Where's Waldo of cocaine addicts. He might be <laughs> listening. Uh, Bruce, thank you for coming in. Sean O, yeah. thank you for uh, doing a fantastic job in the audio. Thanks, buddy. I'm Davey Mack. Good yeah. night, everybody. Happy 4th.